We'll create our presentation floor plan in 10 simple steps. Presentation floor plans help the architect convey his ideas much more easily and clearly to his clients and other professionals in the industry. Step one is our templates. So this is Revit 2023. Under models, you click on new. You select the particular template file you are going to use. For us, it's default metric. You can browse, click on browse to select yours if it's not already loaded. Click on OK. And then it loads in the template. Step two, you set your levels. So double click on the south elevation under the project browser and then use the level icon to select to create more levels. On architecture, you find the level, you click it and draw as if you're creating a line. For more details on how to create level, check out the previous video uh, at the top of the screen. After creating the levels, we rename them very quickly. After setting up your levels, we'll go to floor plan to set up our grids. Double click on any level you want to work on to create your floor plan. Beside the level on the architecture is the grid. You click on grids and then you create them. To understand how to create grids properly and how to explore grids, there is a video already made at the top corner of the screen. You can check it and see how you can use grids in your, in your design. Step three, create walls, doors, and windows. To create walls, on the architecture, click on walls, select wall architectural, select the specific type of wall. For us, it's the 225mm wall. Set the height of the wall, uh, set the location line, and then just go ahead and draw your wall. To draw your wall, since we have our grids, we are just going to draw our wall along our grids very quickly. Drawing your walls in Revit is like um, drawing lines in AutoCAD. You use the escape button to go out of a line if you don't want it to be continuous. Under the modified tab, we can use the icons there to split and trim walls. So we have the split element. We also have the uh, trim element, different types of trim elements. You can explore them as you use Revit. We'll quickly go ahead to create our doors. Under architecture, you click on doors. Select the type of doors based on the template you have loaded. Place the doors on the wall. You can use space bar to control the swing of the doors. And after placing, there are also arrows to flip the doors. Temporary dimensions that apply immediately, you place the door. And you can use the temporary dimensions to properly position the door. We can go ahead to place windows. Click on windows windows and quickly look at very few windows we have loaded in the project and uh, we're just going to place quite a few of those windows. For the toilet windows we can use a, a smaller kind of windows. The next thing is to create a floor. On the architecture you click on floor, architectural. It goes into a sketch mode and I thought click on this line and then sketch out the floor. So we've created very quickly floor, doors, wall and windows. Step 4 we'll add furniture to our floor plan. Under architecture you click on component and click on place a component. We can load various furniture by clicking on load family and then going through the furniture tab to get what we want to load. So let me say I want to load quite a few beds. I click on the bed I want to load into the project. I'll place uh, the beds at the positions I want the beds to be. You can download components from uh, different websites example of such websites can be revit city i want to move this wall a little bit up so i click on move uh, this join and then uh, move this wall a little bit you can use the tab cs to create elements see as a shortcut for create similar you can also move components about by clicking on them and dragging them to position them exactly where you would like to position them so this is basically how to uh, load in families. So I'm just going to uh, load in chairs and sofas. So we've created a floor plan and added furniture to the floor plan. The next thing we'll do is to place our drawings on sheets. I click on the sheet, click on new sheet. You can select a title block. You can select the sheet size and type from previously loaded in sheets. If you want to learn more about creating sheets, you can check this video somewhere around here about uh, how to create amazing sheets in Revit. The next step is to place your floor plans in the sheets and plan the layout of the sheet. On that floor plans, the project browser, you select the specific floor plan. You click and drag into the sheet and it places. This is a new feature in Revit 2023. Whenever you place a view on sheets, it turns blue here to signify that our view is on sheet. Double click on the view to activate it. We'll turn on the crop view down here and show crop view. And we'll use this to crop the view 
into the sheets like this you click and drag at the anchor point uh, once that is done you can turn the show code view off and then try click and deactivate you can click this and drag it to this point to place it within the sheet as the sheet the, the view title you can also click on the view itself and then reduce this view title line to be this way make sure that the scale of your drawing is sizable to that of your sheet i just want to adjust mine click on custom make it like like 75 i need it to be a little bit bigger deactivate view and position the sheet properly next step is to set the graphics view for floor walls and furniture within the sheet if you remember when we went through the various floor plan in presentation one of the things that stood out is that the walls are always very dominant and so you select your wall right click override graphics in view and by category this opens the graphic settings for the wall element in that view under cut patterns, there are various subtitles, but under cut patterns, you can select solid fill and set the color to black for the foreground. In setting up the graphics, we also need to turn on our shadows to give the view some depth. To do that, you click on this icon to turn on the shadows. And there are two settings for the shadows. Let's start with the first one. Under the visual style, click on the 3D box, click on graphic display options and go to lighten. Here we just want to tone down the effect of the shadows. We can leave it at 20%. We can also increase the ambient light if we need to and turn on ambient lighting under shadows. We can also smooth out lines with anti-aliasing. It makes everything smoother. Basically, for this view, this is OK. So we'll click on OK. And then the next setting will be to set out the angle and height of the shadows. So you click on this sun icon, the sun settings, click on the sun settings. Make sure it's just on lighting. Set the level to the actual level you are working on. You can adjust the azimuth and altitude to reduce the depth of this. Let's say 215 by 10. We'll set our shadows. The next thing is the furniture. From our analysis of the presentation plan studied, most of the furnitures are always faded, so let's quickly do that in our floor plan. Select one of the furniture, right click, override graphics in view, by category, check the half tone button, click on apply. Most times uh, you might need to do that for some other components that don't fall under furniture. The half tone also have a setting, so let's just quickly look at that. Under manage, go to additional settings and come to half tone or underlay. We can set this uh, towards the light part and click on OK. So it's faded, but it's not too faded. So something like about 60, 70%. We can also override graphics in view for the grid heads also. And we are done with this step. If you're working on the ground floor, it's always important in your presentation plans to show elements that are beside the building on the site. So I just created this wall to serve as flower beds around since I'm working on the ground floor. And I can't seem to see them on the ground floor plans. I turn on my underlay, under underlay, Go to range, select zero, and then they'll come up there for you. So the next step is to create rooms and room tags, and we can use that to improve our uh, floor plans and presentation. On the architecture, you go to room, and then you just uh, place the rooms uh, at different spaces. Consistency in placing the room is also very important. If there are areas I want to create rooms, but for some reasons they are outside an enclosed space, we could use uh, the room separator is a line that acts as a wall to demarcate a room space. So once that is done, you can place a room there very easily. The shortcut for room is typing RM in your space. In this tutorial, I won't be editing the room tags, but uh, I might just want to show you one or two things to play around with room tags. Select this room tag, click on edit type. You can turn off the room number if they are causing a nuisance for you, and then you just have just the room. You can easily edit the room names by double-clicking on the room and then uh, typing uh, the specific room type you want to use there. You can also delete the tags if they are conflicting with what you are doing. So this is how to apply rooms and room tags to your building. After applying tags, you go to the next step, create legend. Under annotates, you click on the color fill legend and click on place. It's going to ask you uh, the space type, select rooms, color by department or by name. For now, choose name. And once you choose name, you see we have various uh, types of colors automatically generated for us. Now let's go back to our presentation plans. You see most of this presentation 
plants, they try as much as they can not to be too colorful so that it doesn't take away from the impact of the wall. Let's look at this one, for example. Very little saturation in the colors, off-white in most places, so that the walls can be appreciated. This is another example, the same thing, the walls are appreciated more. Uh, this is another example, almost white everywhere. When doing your floor plants, it's not always right to have uh, too many bright colors. By default, these colors are fair, but you might want to reduce the number of colors overall. So you can edit the legend, but can also color the by department, which is very good. So let me show you how to do that. Before you color by department, uh, you can select different rooms. Uh, let's say I want everything within these two rooms to be the same color even though they had different names. So I select the two rooms, I'll come under department, and I can write bedrooms. That's placing them under one department. These two, if I wanted them to have the same color, I can also do that. So basically, once you group different rooms into a department, when you go to edit the color tags under department, so you're basically going to see two, let's say bedrooms and lawns. So the other areas where you didn't do anything were just going to be white or you know left alone that way. You can edit it for the lawn. For example, I want something green. Always go to use the saturated colors so that um, very easily the, the the walls can pop out and nothing is conflict. Here you are. We have our presentation floor plan set. So our presentation floor plan is almost done. But I just want to show you a trick to import images uh, to beautify the presentation plan. Uh, if you need to, instead of going to Photoshop to add them. Under insert, while you're on sheet and while nothing is activated, click on link images. If you have some uh, PDF files uh, that you've downloaded of images like uh, trees on plants and stuff like that on plants, you can easily use them in your presentation plan. Let's just say I need this. I click on open. It's going to import the image. So this is how you can import some Im images into the floor plan to make it more presentable. The these images are not actually on your floor plan. So even while you are working on your normal floor plans and positioning them on other sheets, they will not affect anything. They are just only on this uh, presentation plan sheet. The final thing I want to do is after creating this kind of a view template, you can save them to use in other views. So the easiest way to do that under view, you come to view template and you say create template from current view. And we can name this as a 01 presentation plan. You can also indicate the scale, let's say 75. So, and then it saves this. You can just click OK here. If I go to under floor plan, let's say the natural ground level, and under this view template, and I say apply the template view and select this particular one, it immediately creates the same template I just created in another view. There might be some changes I might need to make here and there based on the depth of the shadows. And outside that, uh, everything will remain the same. I've done this, and the last thing to do is to export it. For you to export, under file, you go to export, and uh, select the export type. For now, I just want to export as an image. So under images, I'll select the image. I will zoom to 100% of actual size, and the rest of quality, I can leave it at 150. Correct window, and then I can set where I want it to ex export to and click on OK. And it exports uh, the work we just did. So basically, this is what we've created. A wonderful presentation plan in Revit from start to finish. Thank you for watching. Click like, share, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.